Hey guys, Dulos here. Got a couple of things to look at today. We have a, a Streamlight TLR6 and a Streamlight Clipmate USB. Both of these items uh, I got for free actually at work today. Uh, we've been doing some business with Streamlight and they gave us a bunch of things and uh, uh, this is what I got to take home, which was pretty good. <laughs> Not the Glocks, of course, but the Streamlights over here. Um, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Streamlight TLR6 weapon light. So I have a Glock 23 and I've got a TLR4 light on it and laser and I've had it for three years now and it's fantastic. Battery life's pretty decent on it, although the batteries are a little pricey. Um, my wife has a, a Glock 27 uh, with obviously no light or anything on it that's meant to be more concealed, but it has no rail on it. So there was never really a light. I never really even thought about looking for a light. Uh, but lo and behold, Streamlight makes um, a light and laser combo for the Glock 27. It's, it's 100 lumens, it's pretty decent, um, but we're going to take a quick look at it today, get some first impressions, and do an install on the Glock 27. So I apologize for the camera work. My tripod's broken. i got to get a new tripod, so uh, you have to deal with shaky cam today. Uh, let's get the 23 out of the way, but we're going to take a look at the Glock 27 and the Streamlight TLR6. All right, so let's keep it safe, and we'll drop the mag, and I'll put the camera down so we don't have that tripod again, and I'll clear the weapon. So some of the key selling points is that the batteries are replaceable with the unit still mounted on the pistol. Uh, there's a little flap at the bottom that opens, you can put the batteries on. Fix the Glocks 26, 27, and 33. Um, three modes of operation, you got white light, it says it runs for an hour. White light with the laser, again an hour runtime, and then the laser only, red laser, 11 hour runtime. Uh, it's an ambidextrous operation. The windage and elevation screws are mounted in brass bushing, so I guess they have a good seating in there. You're not going to tear them open uh, setting that. Um, the contoured housing securely attached to the trigger guard is kind of interesting. I guess it's where you haven't opened it up, but looks like it, it pries open and you can stick it over the trigger guard because there's no rail mount on uh, this size pistol, at least with Gen 3 or Gen 4. Operating temperature, blah, 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 negative 20 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and then a limited lifetime warranty. So all that good stuff. 100 lumens again. So let's uh, put the camera down, and we'll get this package opened up. So this is what you get in the box. You get the light laser combo, TLR6. You get a really tiny Allen key. And then you get two CR, uh, these are weird. You get two CR 1 slash 3 N, so it's almost like 1 third N batteries. And then the manual, of course. All right, so here's the unit. We got a, a button on this side and this side. Got the battery door. You have to lift up and pull down to get over that ledge there. The battery compartment. We've got windage on the side and elevation on the bottom to put that little Allen key in there. Then you have the light and laser on the front. And then we have the fasteners on the side over here. All right, so let's take this thing apart and we'll get it attached in a moment. All right, so we got the unit and the Allen key. And let's see how torque these are in there. You gotta take these three fasteners out. Oh, they're barely in there. To disassemble the unit so that we can put it on the firearm. So the idea is that there's a shell here, a clamshell. You gotta open the battery door too. Yeah, that would make sense. Clamshell opens up. We have the actual unit in here, which is an interesting design. Get a close up of that in a second. And then these are the two clamshell units here. So they say to put the, the side without the door in a flat surface, and that's obviously so you don't tweak the door off. And then you can also put the screws in through that side. So, no, yeah. yeah fits on right here, that's pretty snug, right out of the gate. I'm gonna put the unit in here, just like it was. Pretty simple, it's, you know, it's not really a hard operation here. And we're gonna get this over the trigger guard, over the buttons, and I'll actually close it to help me tighten those down. You can see it's on there pretty good. All right, so I'll put it down and start putting these 
screws back in. Now the manual says to not tighten it too hard. That should be pretty obvious, but you know, you're putting a screw into, into plastic. You know, this isn't, doesn't need to be on there too tight, just tight enough. Yeah, there's gonna be re recoil and you need to maintain zero, but you don't need to make it that tight. In fact, I'm keeping it the Allen key like this so I don't have enough leverage to over torque it, hopefully. But one of the nice things about this design, or at least what they say, is that because the battery door is here on the bottom, you're not gonna lose zero because you don't have to, to disassemble the unit. I guess my take is that other competing units probably don't have that design maybe. I don't know. Um, you know, my TLR for the battery, you screw off the front of this and the battery comes out, so you're still not gonna lose zero. All right, well, these are all on there. Go one last check. That feels pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, so finger tight. Okay, so let's get the batteries in there. Open the battery door, and then you drop these in, negative side down, positive side up. Yep. Ooh, wow, that's nice. Click on both sides. Press and hold for momentary. Click real quick, and it's steady. And it's, this has a 10-minute a, a auto shutoff feature. The battery, again, only lasts an hour with the light on, so... Uh, that's a pretty good idea to have an auto shut off. Well, that's nice too, especially uh, the longer fingers. That's a pretty good reach right there. Press is really simple, at least for the first click. Press and hold might be a little bit awkward depending on your, your finger length, but the nice thing is that it's ambidextrous, so you can get with your pointer finger here, or you can reach around with your other hand and use your thumb. That will probably be my wife's tactic because her fingers aren't that long. Or at least as long as, as mine are. All right, so it's tap to turn on, tap to turn off. Let's press and hold for a momentary. And I say once it's on, so you tap it on, you press both of them to change modes. So I actually turned it off, so let's see if we can do it again. No, it's actually just a light now. Yep, there's the laser. It's a quick, quick touch. Light and laser, I don't know if you can see that there. Light, laser, and now if you turn it off, it remembers. They remember. It remembers the last slot, the last uh, mode. So again, on, press both to change modes. That's pretty good. And off. Again, uh, this is a great option for a gun, a gun light, uh, especially on a, a smaller platform like this. I love the TLR4. We'll see how it stacks up with the TLR6 over time. It's great that my wife's gun now has a light and laser on it. I'm going to look into some holster, holster options. So thanks for watching, guys. Please like, favorite, and subscribe. Uh, especially with everything going on out there these days, more terrorist attacks, uh, people losing their minds, and, and just the world is getting worse and worse every day. Stay safe out there. God bless you guys. And please keep standing up for what's right.